Did you know your iPhone by default is set to take dull photos or photos that have an incompatible format or even shoot videos that are in low quality? And that's the first mistake people make that they don't change their camera settings. So go into your settings and then scroll down to camera and then go into photographic styles and set that to warm. It's the best one of the lot. And then you'll be able to see the difference just how vibrant it is by changing your photographic style. Next, go into record video and change that to 4K at 30 FPS. It's higher resolution, so higher quality. And now these videos are going to be super crisp when you share them on social media or with friends over chat. And lastly, go into formats and set capture to most compatible. This will make sure all your images are captured in JPEG format. And so later, if I want to save them as a file and send it as a document, it will go as a JPEG, which is so much more compatible. Now, the second mistake people make is not bothering what's in their control center. Like if some music is playing around me and I want to quickly identify, I just do it like that and it tells me which song it is, I tap on it and there you go. Or I can instantly access all my alarms with just one tap in the control center. Or if I want to save battery, I can enter low power mode instantly. Or even if I quickly want to jot down something like a phone number or an address or an email ID, I can do that from the control center so easily. And so if you want to customize how your control center looks, you can go into settings, then control center and just see things that you need. And you can, you know, just tap on the plus icon and move them to your control center. Simple. And sure, you can make Siri do this and that way it's really quick. But do note, Siri does not work very well in all languages. And not everyone is comfortable doing this, especially when they're surrounded by people. The other thing people really miss on to doing is using up focus modes. So this is how my home screen looks when I'm working. This is when I'm sleeping. And this one is when I'm shooting videos. And you can switch between all of these focus modes by just going into control center and deciding what you're doing. It changes your apps, your widgets, and even your lock screen, just like that. And focus modes are really easy to set. You just, you know, set them from here. You can decide which people and which apps can reach out to you with notifications or calls. And you can also decide which home screen should be used in that specific uh, focus mode. Next mistake people make is not protecting their iPhone. Did you know if someone knows the passcode to your phone, they can then change that passcode and even make changes to your Apple account. And so to avoid going through that hell, just go into settings, then into screen time, and then scroll down to where it says counting and privacy restrictions. Turn it on and then go all the way down and then for passcode change set to don't allow and for account changes set to don't allow. And that's it. And what is up with people not wanting to speak and let the phone do the typing? And so when you have the keyboard up, just tap on the mic icon and start speaking. Hi, comma, I'm going to be late tonight, full stop. Why don't you start working on the holiday plan and I will join right in, question mark. And just look at that. How cool is it? It's faster, it's accurate, and it's more safe. I mean, think about it when you're walking and texting, or even worse, if you're driving and texting. If anything, at least it's safer. And what is up with people not wanting to use shortcuts? I mean, shortcuts have made iPhones so much more powerful and it really makes your life easy. For example, I've got this shortcut on my home screen, which lets me search for any keyword or a phrase on any of these platforms. So I just search for Shark Geek on Amazon because that's what I want to buy. And there you go, it opens up my Amazon app with that keyword searched. And here I have another shortcut. So if I want to send a WhatsApp message to a phone number that's not saved, I can just type in the number and it opens up that conversation instantly without me saving that contact. Or this really cool PDF shortcut that lets me choose a PDF file and then it lets me extract specific pages of that PDF file and it creates a new file. So I can just choose, all right, get me page number, let's say three, four, and that's it. And it's gonna extract those two pages and give me a new PDF file. So yeah, just go into your app, search for shortcuts and open it up. And you're gonna go into gallery to see all different kinds of shortcuts that exist, all right? It's all nicely categorized and you can see you know, all the shortcuts in a specific category. And if you like something, guys, just click on add and it gets added uh, to your own shortcut library. And from there, you could go inside and add it to your home screen. So it's really easy for you to access. Now, if you see, I've got this nice widget, you know, which is a collection of four shortcuts. And I can add that too by long pressing on the home screen, click on add widget, look for shortcuts, and then look for that group of four. Just make sure your shortcuts are grouped in the same way 
uh, inside the shortcuts app as well. And yeah, that's it. And if you really want your mind to be blown, go to this website called routinehub.co and this has so many shortcuts categorized by category and by the app that you may have. You're gonna love it. Just, just try it once, you'll be amazed. Next, people don't decide what should be backed up on the cloud and what shouldn't be. So most people who go to their iCloud will see their storage full over here. And that's because iCloud by default will try to back up everything uh, to the cloud storage and then say, hey, you're full, buy more storage. And so if you go into manage account storage, you'll be able to make out what's taking, which apps are taking how much space. For me, WhatsApp is important, Photos isn't, so I can just turn off and delete from iCloud. And similarly, you could see for all the apps that you may not need storage for and just remove it from this list. Next, there are a couple of things that you can do by simply back tapping the phone. For example, I could just triple tap the back to turn on the flashlight or turn it off. And I could double tap to launch open the camera really quick. And your phone doesn't even have to be unlocked for you to do this. And these are not the only two things that you can do. So first you've got to set it up. Go into accessibility settings, then into touch, scroll all the way down and then go into back tap. And then you can simply choose what should happen when you double tap or triple tap uh, on the back side. And of course, you've got all of these options, right? Like it's crazy what you've got here. You can even trigger specific shortcuts that you make, which we spoke about uh, just earlier. And guys, lastly, iPhone widgets are really useful. I just don't see enough people using it. Like look at all the widgets I have, you know, the date and time, weather, the shortcuts, battery for the phone, then I've got battery for other accessories, my Gmail widget, calendar widget, and it looks really good. And it really reduces the time to do something. So I can get into my Gmail real quick. I can get directly into compose mode. I could enter into my agenda mode within the calendar. I could literally go on with examples, but first let me show you. Uh, long press on the home screen on any empty area, click on the plus icon on the top left, and now you can go through your entire widget library. It'll have some recommendations at the top, but then you could also go app-wise, click on an app that you use the most and just see what widgets are available and then just tap add widget at the bottom. That's it, I mean, it's really that simple and let it take space on your home screen wherever you think it's best suited and just access those widgets. Like look at Google Maps. I've got a widget that can quickly, um, you know, take me or give me a route to a specific place that I drive to very often, saving me the time to opening the app and then feeding in data. I mean, guys, just try it. You're gonna, you're gonna be amazed at what you find. And that's it, guys. Those were nine things, which may be very basic for quite a few of you, but then you'll be amazed at how many iPhone users are just not making use of these things. And I thought, you know, I should share the wisdom. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as always, if this video was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon. And mark all, really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.